So as we were looking at algebraic expressions previously, what we've been dealing with has been linear, straight lines, and the largest power on one of our variables has been 1 in every single case. So now we're going to look at algebraic expressions that involve exponential notation. That can happen. And it'll change the picture of what we're looking at. But if our highest exponent is 1, we know it's going to be linear, and we can handle those cases. But let's just look at a few more where we have a power that's higher than 1. So a few examples are given to you. x to the fourth is an algebraic expression with an exponent higher than 1. 3x, that quantity squared, minus 2, is an algebraic expression. Power is higher than 1. Same for the last. So we want to evaluate a few different expressions given a value for our variable. So we want to evaluate 1,000 minus x to the fifth when x is equal to 5. So it behaves just like normal if it was a 1. We just plug it in, but now we have to evaluate that exponent first. So we've got 1,000 minus 5 to the fifth. So wherever x is, put parentheses around it so you don't mistake. Oh, it's to the fourth. Uh-uh-uh. Now we should all match. All right, x to the fourth. So again, wherever x is, put parentheses around it because the power is only attached to x. It's not also attached to that negative because it's not included in parentheses. So wherever x is, I like to put parentheses so I don't mistake. What is my power actually attached to? Just to the five, not also to the negative. So what do we get out of here? 1,000. And what does this mean? 5 times 5, 25, times another 5, 125, times another 5, 625. So once we get there, doing the subtraction, what are we looking at? In total, 375. And the next part, the Reckhart structure is a circular eroded geologic dome with a radius 20 kilometers. We want to find the area of the structure. So what is it looking like? Circular with radius 20. So what is the area of a circle? You don't remember, that's okay. Area equals pi r squared. So pi is just a constant, 3.1415, blah, 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 goes on, never ending. And r is our radius, a is the area. So we just need to plug in the pieces of information that we are given. So we're trying to solve for a, that's our unknown. And pi, I'm going to keep it as it is right now, because this is the most precise way to sum it up. What is our radius? 20 and our units, kilometers. Okay, so that quantity squared. So what does that mean again? I'm taking this, multiplying it times itself, two times in total. So pi is precise. It sums up all of the unending, never repeating decimals. But if I now represent it as 3.14, and I cut off the rest of the decimal, now I'm approximating the area. So we need those little bacon symbols again. It's not exactly equal to pi now. We are just approximating what it's around. So pi is around 3.14. We cut off all the rest. Approximation. And again, this times itself two times in total. So as we start to simplify, what are we looking at? I have 3.14. 20 times 20 will give me 400. So I've got 3.14 times 400. And how many factors of that kilometers do I have? Two of them. So I can sum that up nicely and say 400 kilometers squared, square kilometers, whatever you want to say. All right. So if we do that math now, 400 times 3.14, our area of this funny circular thing is around 1,256 square kilometers. So in this part, I'm not so concerned with, hey, can you do the multiplication? Can you do the setup and worry about the proper units at the end? All right. 
next to. They look very similar, but they're different, and we're going to discuss what is different about them. So, again, here, I'm going to put parentheses around x. It means the same exact thing, just to be careful. Because what is 3 attached to? The entire outside parentheses. So what I put in for x is going to be negative 2. So I'm looking at 5 times negative 2 cubed. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What has to happen first? Inside of the parentheses. So what is 5 times negative 2? We're looking at negative 10 cubed. So we can break that down easily. What does that mean? Negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. Three times in total. So what are we getting out of here? Negative times a negative give us positive 100 times negative 10. So we're looking at negative 1,000. You can do it in parts like that. But, what's different about this one? Again, wherever I see an x, I'm going to put parentheses around x. And the 3 is only attached to x, as the parentheses now indicate very explicitly. So when we plug in negative 2, this one's going to be very different than that. What are we going to have? I've got 5 times negative 2 cubed. So I've got 5 times negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. That's our base times itself three times in total. So what are we looking at in this case? I'm going to do our powers first. After a while, you'll get more familiar, and these will come out quickly. You'll realize, oh, negative 8, really fast. But we can do it in parts again. So negative 2 times negative 2 will give us positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 will give us negative 8 altogether. So I'm looking at 5 times negative 8 will give us negative 40. So were those situations different? Very much so. The parentheses are very important. What actually is our base? In this one, it was the entire thing. In this one, it was only x, and it changes that answer significantly. So go ahead and take these two. Evaluate them for their respective variable values. So what did the first mean? t to the third, and t is equal to 5. Again, you can put parentheses around it. So I'm looking at 5 to the third. 5 times 5 times 5. So we can do it in parts. First two will give us 25. Times another will give us 125. Positive. And for the second one, what are we looking at there? So x is negative 2. So I'm looking at negative 5 times, okay, my x I'm going to put in parentheses, to the fifth. So my first question, my base is only negative 2. If I raise it to the fifth power, is it going to be positive or negative in the end? Just this piece. Negative 2 raised to the fifth. 5 is odd, so it's going to be negative. And what are we looking at there? Can you see? Yes, you can. Negative 5 times negative 32. 2 to the 5th is 32, and we've got negative on the inside. So negative times a negative gives us a positive. And what constant are we looking at? 160. So those parentheses are super important. Recognize what is your base in each of those cases. It will make a huge difference.